The James Webb Space Telescope released a stunning image of the Cartwheel Galaxy. It shows what appears to be the aftermath of a cosmic hit and run. The galaxy was once most likely a spiral, much like our home galaxy, the Milky Way. But something, probably a small, compact galaxy, smacked it dead on, sending out a powerful shock wave that obliterated its spiral structure and set off a wave of star formation that continues to this day. The result is a dramatic example of destructive creation. The cartwheel is located about 440 million light years away in the constellation Sculptor. It's about 150,000 light years in diameter, so a little bit larger than the Milky Way. It was discovered by Fritz Zwicky back in 1941. Even though he never had images as sharp as Hubble's or Webb's, Zwicky described the cartwheel as having one of the most complicated structures awaiting its explanation on the basis of stellar dynamics. In other words, he wanted to know just what the hell happened to this galaxy. He wasn't alone, of course. Lots of astronomers have been wondering the same thing. And that's why the cartwheel has been observed extensively, and not just in visible light, but in X-rays, ultraviolet, and even in the infrared with the Spitzer telescope. But being a small telescope, it was hard for Spitzer to get a really good look at the interior of the cartwheel. So composite images like this have varying levels of detail, and we can see that there's still some information that's being hidden by all of the dust that was stirred up in the galaxy. But now with Webb, we can see through much of the intervening dust at high resolution. Now we can see individual stars and star-forming regions in incredible detail. This image is a composite of Webb's near-infrared camera and its mid-infrared instrument. The colors were chosen such that the shorter wavelengths are blue and the longer wavelengths are red. So together they give us like a pink rosé cartwheel because of the colors that the imaging team just happened to use. But if we consider the images from the two instruments separately, we can begin to see different structures within the galaxy. NearCam shows us where the stars, the star-forming regions, and star clusters are located, while MIRI shows the cooler dust lanes and how they make up the overall structure of the galaxy. And notice that in the MIRI image, the colors were once again remapped to bring blue into the shorter end of the mid-infrared spectrum. The cartwheel's weird shape makes it a rare type of galaxy called a ring galaxy. It's thought that ring galaxies, like the cartwheel, used to be a flat spiral disk galaxy that underwent a head-on or nearly head-on collision with a smaller compact galaxy. The collision sends out a shockwave that rips through the galaxy, setting off a tsunami of star formation. Since the shockwave expands radially, the result is a giant ring of newly formed stars. Now exactly how that happens depends on a number of variables. There's the masses of the colliding galaxies, the amount of gas and dark matter between them, their radii, their impact velocities, the sizes and orientation of the impactor, and many others. And that's why groups like Renaud et al. did a lot of work on simulating the creation of a cartwheel-like galaxy. Interestingly, they found that before the collision, the approaching galaxy strips out a lot of gas from the target, and it effectively shut down that galaxy's star formation. And galaxies affected this way are described as quenched because they no longer have the gas needed to create new stars. Obviously, the target galaxy doesn't stay quenched for very long, but it's still pretty weird to think that the galaxy wouldn't be able to produce very many stars for a few million years before impact. The impact creates a shockwave that expands outward at a fairly constant speed of 120 kilometers per second. This is what forms the main ring. But the impact also creates a vertical structure that's kind of reminiscent of the way water rises after an impact. In a way, the nuclear region ends up getting displaced vertically from the main ring. Meanwhile, the ring is expanding outward, creating new stars along the way. But the ring doesn't last all that long. Most of the star formation in the ring takes place during just the first 100 million years. After 110 million years, the ring is barely noticeable. But as the ring passes by, clumps of gas flow through the spokes down to the nuclear region, where it kicks off a second wave of star formation in the inner ring. The cartwheel's ring is estimated at being between 200 and 300 million years old, 
so that would be at least twice as old as what the simulation predicts. But the simulations weren't trying to recreate the actual cartwheel specifically, they were just trying to understand those weird orbital dynamics of those head-on collisions. Still, the result does underscore that the cartwheel's ring is a transitory phenomena, and we should not expect it to last for much longer. Now, with so many massive star clusters forming, there's undoubtedly going to be a number of supernovae. In fact, Supernova 2021 AFDX was detected in November of last year. The bright hydrogen emission line is the telltale sign that this was a Type II core collapse supernova of a massive star. Supernovae go off in dusty galaxies all the time, but we really can't see them when there's so much dust in the way. So Webb's ability to see through so much of this dust means it's going to be able to detect far more supernovae than we can right now. Observations taken with the Chandra X-ray Observatory reveal the location of several ultra-luminous X-ray sources. And these are likely neutron stars and black holes in binary systems that are accreting material from their companions. As matter falls in, they form accretion disks which heat up to hundreds of millions of degrees and radiate enormous amounts of X-rays. Now we have similar phenomena here in the Milky Way, but with the cartwheel producing so many massive binary star systems, it's just producing X-rays on a whole other scale. And now we have this incredible infrared data set from Webb. Now remember, this image is a composite of NearCam and MIRI. The NearCam image is covering a wavelength range from about 0.9 to 4.4 microns and get colored blue, green, yellow, and red. It looks similar to the Hubble image in that it shows us a concentration of younger, bluer stars, but it's also showing us the glowing dust from newborn stars, as well as the reddish glow of older stars. And you can see in the ring where it's just littered with pockets of star formation. And NearCam also lets us see those newly formed clusters in the inner ring as well. Now the thing about young stars is that they generate very strong stellar winds and that allows them to blow away much of the dust that immediately surrounds them. NearCam can then peer through the remaining dust to reveal their presence. But what really blows my mind are NearCam's images of the spokes. At visible wavelengths, the spokes appear almost ghostly in comparison. But this just goes to show that we can't trust our eyes all the time either. The dust is opaque to visible light. In the Milky Way, we only can see dust lanes visually when they're seen in silhouette against a bright background. But there's nothing very bright behind the cartwheel, so it never seemed intuitive to me that we'd actually be seeing dust that's blocking our view. I always assumed we were just looking through the galaxy into intergalactic space. Webb shows us this isn't true. NearCam sees through the dust to reveal star formation taking place in the spokes as well. It gets even better with MIRI, which images the cartwheel from 7.7 .7 to 18 microns. That takes us well out into the mid-infrared and detect the thermal emission. But we don't see as many stars in this part of the spectrum because they're not particularly bright at these wavelengths. But we do see the warm glow of hydrocarbons, organic compounds, silicate dust, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. PAHs are essentially soot. Now the thing about dust is that it's created by dying stars as they belch out huge quantities of complex organic molecules as they age. So it could be that this is relatively new dust that was expelled by dying stars in the wake of the shockwave. On the other hand, it could be that the dust was already there before the collision, got plowed by the shockwave, and has been spiraling back down along the spokes ever since. Meanwhile, back in the core, Miri reveals that the inner ring seems to be connected to the nucleus by another set of spokes. So it's kind of like a cartwheel within a cartwheel. Now all of this is thanks to a head-on collision with another galaxy. But which galaxy was it? Well, there are two companion galaxies right next to the cartwheel, dubbed G1 and G2. G1 is a blue, almost Magellanic cloud-like galaxy with vigorous star formation. G2 is a diffuse yellow compact spiral with older, fainter stars and relatively little dust. Now the difference between these two companions is really noticeable in the Miri imagery. G1 shows plenty of dust, while G2 all but disappears. So, who done it? 
Well, on the one hand, G1 does have a lot of star formation going on, just like the cartwheel. Coincidence? Maybe. But G2 is lacking all of that dust and has older stars, which you could also expect to see happen in the aftermath of a collision, where the gravity from the larger galaxy strips out the smaller galaxy's mass. However, neither of these two galaxies are likely to be the culprit because they're both really close to the cartwheel. And that means they'd have to be moving pretty slow to be this close 200 million years after the collision. It's hard to imagine there would be enough energy getting transferred into the cartwheel this way. However, there is a third companion galaxy outside of Webb's field of view. And this galaxy, called G3, is linked to the cartwheel by a long plume of hydrogen gas. We can't see this gas in optical or even in the infrared, but radio observations can trace out the contours of this hydrogen. The plume is pretty much the smoking gun evidence that G3 was in fact the bullet. The cartwheel is a beautiful mess, but it's also a laboratory for understanding the dynamics of galaxy interactions, star formation, and stellar motions on the largest scales. And now with Webb, we can study the flow of matter within these colliding galaxies like never before. Now these images were made available as part of Webb's early release science program. And the idea here is to take as many images of scientifically interesting targets as possible and just get them out there into the public so that astronomers can look at these data sets and better map out the interiors of the cartwheel and go back and simulate how the collision could have actually produced the galaxy. There will be a bunch of papers coming soon and we'll be talking about their results here. And by the way, we are going to be talking with the imaging team to see just how these images were in fact created in the first place. I'm so thankful to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning STEM interactively. There's even an entire course just on astrophysics. You can get your hands dirty with all kinds of physics like the life cycles of stars all the way to the fate of the universe. Interactive learning is a great way to not just play around with ideas, but to just understand them at a deeper level. Best of all, you can use Brilliant whenever you'd like. Whether you're traveling or taking a break at work, there's always something new that you can learn. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash launchpadastronomy or click the link in the description. The first 200 visitors to this link will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. A huge thanks as always to my patrons for helping to keep Launchpad Astronomy going, and I'd like to welcome Michael Lloyd and Brandon Y as my newest supporters. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this incredible universe of ours, well please make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay curious my friend.